Thank you. That's, that was really uh, interesting. I felt slightly intimidated at the beginning of your talk, thinking uh, that I was not going to be able to pick, on, <clears throat> pick up on it. But in fact, what you said is actually a good setting for what, what I want to say, which is about um, whether the media is truthful to itself. Uh, we had the, the, the question earlier on about, about people being cynical and not believing anything that they read in the media. But there is within society, as within the media, a kind of cognitive dissonance on these, these issues because people tell you they don't believe anything they read in the media and the next minute they're quoting you something that they've read in the media. <laughs> and uh, that kind of paradox is, is, is there at the, at the heart of the journalistic uh, enterprise as well. And uh, there is a sense in which the media uh, is not fully truthful with, it, with itself. When you're a young journalist, um, my first journalistic experience was on the student newspaper where we pretty much decided what was the news. And um, <clears throat> when you then go into a professional environment, you find that you're, you're supposed to know um, what news is, but, but, but no one actually tells you there are academic courses, but journalists are by, by and large very disdainful of academic courses on journalism. Uh, and j news values are learned by a kind of osmosis. Um, you you, you uh, are given a story to do, uh, you don't do it in, in the correct way, the news editor corrects you, you come in the next day and say, oh, I found a story, he says, that's not a story. And uh, you, you, you learn by trial and error what news values are, and there's very little reflection on, on what they amount to. And what I've tried to, to put together here is uh, uh, an idea of, of, of what those things distill down to um, uh, after 30 years of experience of it. So news values are primarily about events, not about situations. What happened yesterday? What happened yesterday that was different from other days? If it's, if it's unusual, it's more likely to be news than if it's usual, which is a very particular kind of truth. The media deals in news, not in truth. <coughs> it's important to, to remember. And most news events are self-contained. They're not kind of part of a, uh, an ongoing process. I mean, they are in reality, but they're not portrayed in that way. In news, there is usually conflict. Sometimes it's overt, sometimes it's implicit. It can be conflict in, in actions or it can be conflict in, in values, um, as in controversy. Controversy <coughs> obviously varies from one uh, newspaper and, and news outlet to another. Um, but by and large, newspapers and, and the media look for things that will irritate, anger or outrage right-thinking people. And right-thinking people are the people who read us or watch us. So you get a different sense of what's scandalous if you read The Guardian or The Daily Telegraph. And uh, likewise, we've had Fox News mentioned, uh, you could go to Al Jazeera um, to, uh, to the other ex ex extreme. And uh, it may well be that there's a kind of duty on us as readers to read with care and to make sure that we, when we've read The Guardian, have we gone and had a look at The Sun? Have we looked at Al Jazeera? You know, do, we, do, do we seek out um, views that are different from, from our own? And this notion of poetic truths uh, is, is, is something that, uh, that Tim's story about the, 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 the woman who blew herself up and then turned out not to have blown herself up uh, was a, was, is, is a very um, telling story because it's a story which, in the views of lots of uh, sections of the media, ought to be true. And so, therefore, there's a kind of barroom logic which, which, which governs the way news is driven in the very fast situations where decisions are made uh, on the turn of, uh, of a moment. News is often about power, people of influence, decisions of consequence. It's not, by and large, about the kind of thing that Tim Livesey was talking about, the woman who went and spent six months working as a toilet cleaner. That is not news. That, is, that may be good journalism, but it's not the norm uh, of, of news. And power and celebrity is, is one of the governing things in, in the modern media. Uh, it seems to me, I haven't got time to unpack this now, but it seems to me that celebrity is a, is a new form of power. Um, news happens to people, uh, not to situations. Um, a terrible thing which happens to one person is something which, which is much more likely to, to get into the news than a general report about uh, a flood or whatever. If you get a flood, you have to go and find the person through whom to tell the story. Uh, and that has strengths, but it also has weaknesses. So this, how will it affect you? Interest rates are focused as though they're already about mortgages, because most newspaper um, news editors are, are concerned about their mortgage, so it's a home loan and not an interest rate. 
uh, a volcano erupts and it's not a question of what does this tell us about climate change or global warming, it's about um, how will it affect your holiday uh, in Iceland. And likewise, the rail, a rail strike, uh, we're not told the ins and outs of the rights and wrongs of what's going on. The, f the media focus mainly on commuter chaos, your journey home, how it will be affected. And you see the absolute paradigm of this in the sun, which I call the greed, sex, fear paradigm, which I found some, uh, summed up on one page of the sun one day with a winner holiday to Las Vegas, page three stunner and granny beaten up in her own bedroom. <laughs> so if, what is the world to which this holds up the mirror? Not the one that I occupy on a daily basis. <laughs> The internet, very briefly, I think exacerbates a lot of the uh, problems of, of the media. Uh, we can use it in a serendipitous way. Um, we just see what's thrown up onto, onto Twitter or, or onto the, the various feeds that we, we, we favour. Um, and that's quite arbitrary and uh, decontextualised. Um, we choose our own followers. We choose our own uh, friends. And, uh, 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 and in a sense, they reinforce our worldview. So we think we're on Twitter, we're getting a lot of input. But, you know, have you got your enemies on Twitter? Do you follow what they say? Uh, or, or is it just a self-referential process, as the Pope would call it? What's happened there? Uh, there's a dynamic to the news. Uh, this, the, increasingly, with, with um, uh, rolling news, 24-hour television, the, the, the thirst to be first with the news. And one of the... Um, things which has changed in recent times is that you used to mainly go to an event and report it. Now, because people want to be first with the news, they write about it in advance. The Pope is thought likely to be. Uh, Tories have leaked that they may do this. And often you get huge amount of coverage about what is supposed to be going to happen and very little coverage the next day about what actually happened. Even when, in some cases, as in the case of the suicide bomber that Tim was talking about, uh, the truth turns out to be different. And I was quite shocked to hear that story this morning because I had, I had heard the suicide bomber story. I hadn't heard the correction um, because, as I think I, I say in, in one of these slides somewhere, um, a lie is halfway around the world before the truth gets its boots on. And these corrections are always tiny on page 10, and the front page story saying five in one Muslims uh, are back ISIS uh, is, is, is there for everyone to see, and they don't, they don't see the correction. So there's, 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 a, there's a, um, a, a, a bias within, within the dynamic of the news. Um, we, we've heard the one source or two thing. Uh, the BBC are increasingly falling uh, to, into the Sky News mold. Uh, Sky News was, was parodied when it began as never, uh, uh, <coughs> never wrong for long. Um, <laughs> first with the news, first with the correction. Um, and the BBC is increasingly doing that. I saw Matt Fry live on, well, this is ch um, Channel 4, but I've seen similar things on BBC News. He was live in the uh, Place de la Republique uh, saying, oh, people are ignoring the French government. They're coming out to, to pray and to put flowers out. And then suddenly there's a panic and everybody's running. And I don't know what the panic is. And we've got to move. We've got, no, oh, oh, now the police are saying there is no panic. We can all go back. And, <laughs> and you're sitting there thinking, what is this telling us? Uh, apart from the fact that people are confused and panicking, and how does that add to our uh, our knowledge of the situation? It is in the in in the uh, purest form of the word sensational, uh, and most of the media nowadays, apart from perhaps the FT, but most of the heavy papers too, have joined in this kind of sensational uh, model of news. There's a dynamic to news. It's not just about telling <coughs> stories. Uh, it's more than a narrative. Uh, so that if you take someone like Wayne Rooney, there is this set him up and knock him down. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's doing well. Oh, no, he's not doing well. He's had a problem with his wife now. And th you can't keep reporting the same thing. This is a, a footballer who's, who's playing well. It has, it's not a story, that. It only is a story the next day if it says the opposite of what it said the day before. And I actually overheard a showbiz editor once in a restaurant talking to his to his. Uh, his two colleagues on the next table and uh, they were saying oh we're going to send so and so to interview this uh, uh, um, uh, star and what you know what should what should what should the line be oh I think it's time to take her down a peg or two <laughs> so the, the, the reporter was being sent to brief to uh, was being briefed to go and see this woman in order to abuse her because there'd been too much good written about her in the past so um, that's, that's a kind of uh, example of how that news tra trajectory works. Um, 
there is no hierarchy of truth in news editing. Uh, there are only formulas about splits and rows uh, into which new situations can be poured, as it were. They're moulds. So you can, you can have the Labour Party, the Church of England, the England football team, any, any institution you care to name. Uh, the stories are always the same about them. They're always about splits and personal personalities, and uh, so it, it, it gives a, there's a kind of homogeneity to a lot of news as a result of that. Um, and as you get older as a journalist, you get more and more bored with this, and you don't want to have to do it, um, which is why you resort to being a visiting professor in public <laughs> ethics. <laughs> I want to just conclude with this, uh, gospel values, if we look at gospel values, you know, what, what are the values that we find uh, in, in Jesus' ministry, and you know, there's some, some of them there, and we compare those with what, the, what I've just outlined, the news values, uh, they, are, they are not um, mirror opposites, but they don't overlap an awful lot, and so when, when we... Um, when we read the news, it's important that we read it with, with uh, uh, open eyes, and, uh, rather than uh, just accepting that what we're, what we're told is, uh, is, is self-evidently true. And to look at the news through gospel values rather than through news values uh, is, is a salutary exercise. Thank you.